Okay, um, sorry to keep you waiting. We changed up our, our practice schedule today because uh, <laughs> we got our, our second practice in of the week here and this morning. I uh, didn't think we'd be able to get it in this afternoon, so I had to go out there and get it done, which made me a little bit late to uh, this and apologize for that. Okay, Iowa State, uh, looking at their, their uh, through their film, uh, it, they're, they're, they're without a doubt the most competitive 2-9 and nine team in the country. That, that's for certain. People can say what they want about how they're no good. Uh, they've been in plenty of games. Uh, you know, uh, had a chance to win against Texas, against Texas Tech. Uh, you know, recently against TCU. Uh, halftime against uh, OU, it was tied, I think. <laughs> you know, and then last week they, you know, saw them beat uh, Kansas 35 to nothing. So. Extremely competitive football team. They they, they they are what they usually are, um, which is well coached. They're extremely sound with their schemes. They're an incredibly tough outfit that uh, plays with with uh, with a bunch of effort and a bunch of energy. And it will be a tremendous challenge for us as it is every week in the Big 12. Uh, it seems like they've uh, found their identity offensively, <coughs> going with uh, uh, how do you pronounce that? Rohatch? What is that? Grant. Grant. What's it, how do you pronounce that last name? I'm not quite sure how you do it. Um, red shirt freshman. Um, but uh, they're doing a lot of good things with them. Uh, you know, they, they, they've got a bunch of depth. You know, they got three three really good running backs that they get the ball to a good bet. Uh, you know, a couple of receivers that look good. Huge offensive line. They're extremely big. Uh, but, you know, really, really, really sound and well coached and, and uh, you know, just uh, do a good job defensively. Same thing. We we all know Wally does a great job for them, and, and uh, they, they don't try to trick you. Uh, it, it's one of the I don't want to say more simple schemes that that's out there, but they they do a great job of just holding their gaps up front, playing playing tough. Uh, the number 52, the George linebacker guy, is is just a tremendous football player. Uh, seems like they got a linebacker like that each and every year. Um, that that's about the same type of guy. So uh, really do a good job. They they're going to make it. Tr they're going to try to take away the run. They're going to try to outgap us. They're going to try to bring down the safeties late. Uh, play a lot of man coverage on the outside. Seems like there's a lot of Big 12 schools going to this. Uh, I don't know what the you know why why that's happening. Uh, but uh, over the course of the last couple of years, there's a lot of quarters coverage, a lot of zone coverage, zone blitz stuff, and it seems like it's going more towards the man coverage uh, tendencies of, of adding people in the box to try to take away the run and, and take your chances and play man on the outside. They do the same stuff. Uh, uh, special teams, <coughs> um, you know, really good in the return units. They've got uh, three kickoff returns, and we watched it today with the guys. There's about three more that could have got out. So they, they do a great job in the return uh, units. They've given up a couple of, uh, 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 from their coverage units, they've given up a little bit, but uh, got a great punter. Uh, doesn't have the numbers he had last year. I think he's dealt with some, some, some weather issues that have prevented him from getting the numbers that he had last year, uh, but still a quality, quality uh, returner as well. So all three sides of the ball, same thing, well coached. Uh, you know, just just tremendous try-hard guys that that got some momentum last week after some tough losses this year. Uh, so they're probably as 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 confident as they've been all year, and and will come in here and, and, and fight hard for a win. Been telling the guys all week, you know, basically for you know since the Kansas loss that this time of the year it doesn't really matter who you play. It's the team that has the most energy. It's the team that plays with the most effort. And is willing to be tough and strain and fight your butt off for a win. It's the team that's going to win. So, questions? <laughs> How have the guys responded from from Kansas? I know you were pretty downhearted after that one. Do you feel like you bounced back? Do you feel like the, the time away has kind of given them an opportunity to refocus? Well, we'll find out. Uh, you know, I had a good develop. We, we we got over Kansas the next day. Uh, you, you, in, in this game, you can't dwell on on losses. You can't uh, you can't sit there and feel good about victories. You, you can for about 12 hours, and then you got to come in here and you got to get it over with, and you got to move on. Um, 
So we did that last week. We've already talked about all this. Last week was a big developmental week that we practiced a lot of guys and focused on academics. And then you know this week we're back to work. We don't have any other distractions with academics or or, or any, anything socially going on. So uh, it, it's been all about Iowa State for for two days and been relatively happy with the way the guys are preparing and and uh, you know and, and, until we get smacked in the mouth on Saturday, we'll see how they respond. Talk so much about that developmental time with some of the guys who, particularly on scout team. Did you find anything out that maybe you didn't know by giving them more reps and more looks during that week? No, it's you don't. I mean, it's three days, you know. So I mean, you 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 you, you meet with them, you rep them, you try to teach them, you know. And, and the, the 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 developmental stuff is going to happen whether you just time is what they need more than anything. But just you know, being able to practice them and meet with them for three days is certainly not going to hurt anything. Dan, it's all, it's all through football. Uh, Baylor, Baylor beats, uh, you, you guys beat Baylor. I mean, Baylor beats you guys. You guys beat Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State beats Baylor. Kansas beats you, uh, beats you guys. Uh, Iowa State beats Kansas. What's the, what's the explanation for why this happens almost every week somewhere? That, yeah, it's just, it's just parody in college football. I've been talking about it within the Big 12 a good bit, but the truth of the matter is it's happened within the Big East, too, for the, the three years prior to that. You know, if you look back at what West Virginia's record was, uh, you know, there there is the same thing was happening. We went to go to the Orange Bowl, and, and you, you, did, you, you forget that we lost a couple of Big East games and then barely beat a couple of Big East teams to get to the Orange Bowl. It's just it's just parody in college football. It's very evident in the five power conferences, but <clears throat> you know, it, it obviously trickles down uh, you know, into the, the non power conferences and then, you know, there's uh, we've talked about FCS schools, you know, beating FBS schools that happened again last week. So just parody in college football and, and you can't take anything for granted and uh, you gotta prepare like it's uh, you know, like uh, it, it, like it's important to you every week, or you will uh, you will get beat. I don't think you can explain it any better than that. There's there's a few that can get away with just showing up and, and not playing particularly well and, and winning. It, it's hard to do. I thought Iowa State wanted to take the run away. It's something they've had trouble doing this year. Do you feel like that's an area you guys can be successful with, an area you want to look to really take advantage of? Yeah, I hope so, since how that's what we try to do every week. I mean, it's, I, mean I, I say that, and I feel silly saying it, because everybody tries to take the run away and everybody tries to run the ball. So there's a few exceptions. But uh, we'll, we'll, we'll certainly try to do that. Uh, have had you know, relative success doing so. Uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's another trend. Uh, you know, where a lot of these rushing yards are coming from quarterbacks too, which we don't have the luxury of. Uh, or I could lie and say that we put in the zone read power with Paul, and that would be fun. Uh, but it, it, there is just watching it. You know, a lot of a lot of rushing yards that Iowa State's giving up has been from quarterbacks. So we got to, you know, we're we're, we're not, we're not going to try to get 300 yards rushing with trying to rush our quarterback a bunch to get him a, a whole bunch of that chunks of yardage. So we're, we're, we're going to do what we do offensively, which is try to establish the run. And when you know, they start adding people too quickly, then we're going to throw the ball. Yeah, it won't be Ford. Uh, it's just he's just not. Uh, you know, he, he could go in and, and, and piece it together if we needed to, but you know, we're 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 just gonna let him sit there and use him as we need to and, and rep the other two right now. So they they've taken 50 percent of the reps and uh, you know they're 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 not a whole lot different now than they were a week ago or two weeks ago other than other than climate's cleared. So. I don't know. Maybe we'll play them. Maybe we'll just rotate them. Try to go every other play. We haven't tried that yet. Uh, they, they've done good. They've both done good. They're, they're, they're trying hard. You know, they're, they're practicing well. They're, they're competing. Uh, they're, they want to get better. Um, you know, I, I feel like we can win with either one. I really do. 
Uh, Clint's proven to where he's won a couple of Big 12 games. Uh, Paul's proven to where he can go in there and run the offense effectively if he stays within the scheme and what we're, the, and what we're trying to ask him to do, which he's working hard on. And I feel like we can learn from him as well. And is, it, is it too simple or is it unfair to say that I mean, relative to that position at quarterback, that this year has been like every other one for you. You had one guy, maybe as soon as August 1st, that you know, it could have been very different this year, or is that not fair to everything else that maybe missed by? Well, there's 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 a lot of, I mean, and, and I'm the first to say it, we haven't had a winning performance offensively this year, not one time. So it uh, starts with me, haven't done a good job with it. Um, it just the, just all the dynamics combined has obviously not been a winning effort, and that's something that will get addressed in the off season. But I don't know. I don't. I don't it just points the fingers at me. I didn't do a good job of coaching them. But there's a lot of different dynamics that have to exist in order to be good and have winning performances offensively, which we don't possess any other than the fact that the guys are trying hard. What have you learned about the offense? I mean, what what have you learned from this season? Obviously, it's been trying for you guys offensively that, that you can change heading into next year, that you can do differently to make sure that <coughs> happens. It's continuity. Continuity is the biggest thing. You know that that that's and and, and I, I don't anticipate ever being in the situation that we're in this year with when it comes to continuity, lack of continuity, new quarterbacks, injured quarterbacks, you know, new skill guys across the board. New coaches, you know. I, I just, I just don't anticipate this ever happening again. And what, what did the senior class meant to you? And you think the the program is a smaller unit, but they were freshman and sophomore when you came and took over the program. Coaching change, conference change. Yeah, it's been tough for them, and I, I appreciate these guys. There's about 24 of them last year. I said the same thing about you know, and then this year there's there's I think 14 of them. The, the only one that doesn't fall into this category is Charles Sims. Um, but, you know, a collection of guys that, you know, have been through a lot of adversity, coaching changes and, and conference changes. I mean, there's a lot of change going on that, that um, you know, certainly appreciate everything that they've done, working hard, um, proud of how they're all doing academically. They're all real close to either have gotten their degree or going to get achieve that. So. You know, just like every senior day across the country, you know, it, it, our job as coaches and players is to is to put our best foot forward Saturday and to try to sit them out. And I thought last week that these, you know, usually we deal with this some in the bowl game too, <coughs> but this one this one's a little different because there's no bowl game. That this week here is the last week that we're gonna, you know, spend time together as a team. You know, so make this week. I think earlier you said that um, Sam is good for younger guys, and I think you said that Smallwood kind of does everything he does. I might be mistaken, but I think that was what you said. It seems like you're you're using Smallwood similarly to, especially in the passing. Is that, is that fair comparison moving forward? Very much so. I had Charles when he was a true freshman too, and, and there's no difference. You know, Charles has been able to have the, you know, been able to endure four long seasons and, and a lot of touches and uh, a lot of. A lot of ball games and, and has handled it unbelievably well, and, and will do it in the NFL for a long time. Uh, Wendell, as a true freshman, is no different than Charles, and, 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 and has used Charles being in that room to his advantage by by just watching how he, you know, his work ethic and how he does things, how he attacks the day every single day, uh, how he attacks the game, how he practices, how he plays, and then and then seeing the the versatility. That, that he plays with, uh, and, and you know, it's, it's going to help in recruiting as well. Not a lot of people that do what we do with, with him do. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have some receivers that they kind of stick in the backfield like we do with Tavon. But but having the versatility to be an every down back and run between the tackles and then also be able to catch the ball out of the backfield and then line it up outside and be a receiver as well is, is uh, pretty impressive. Any injury report? You had a lot of guys last week, or a few guys last week. You said couldn't have played if you played. What about this week? Uh, yeah, I guess the questionable guys are, are Cook's questionable, Fight's questionable, Bruce is questionable, Worley is questionable. I uh, have not practiced uh, 
have not practiced to the point where they can play. Uh, you know, we're, we're still on Tuesday against Unique. Then I'm talking to you before, you know, because I've got a couple of days uh, with them already. Uh, but th th those four are questionable in addition to the, you know, the guys that are down for good. Barber had surgery yesterday. Uh, KJ is still being monitored by, by our doctors. Uh, and, and obviously he's out for the year. Christian Brown will be back in January. <coughs> Uh, Malik Greaves went down with the with the with the hip, you know, which he, this is his red shirt year, but it's it's prohibiting him from developing. He'll he'll be back hopefully around March. In, in addition to Nana and Petaway and, and, and Tonkery, those guys. Rick still out? No, I think Rick's back. Yeah, he's been out there. They 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 did an MRI on him to make sure, and, and it, he'll be fine. So I and again, he had to play ball in like three four weeks. So I don't know what's going to happen once he actually pops somebody. You can say he's cleared for contact, but practice hits are different than game hits. But he has practice, and he should be back, yes. Sir. I think we've got uh, Thanksgiving coming up on Thursday. I'm not sure what your plans will be to celebrate it, but what are you thankful for this year? Uh, well, it, it talked about the seniors. Always got to be, you know, always got to be thankful for them. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm thankful for the Big 12. I, I really am. I mean, it's challenging, but but we're relevant and, and we're learning a lot about ourselves as far as uh, you know being in a power conference. Uh, and and I, I, I really do. I mean, I. It seems like I always complain about it as far as where we're at, but that, that's not true. I mean, I think we're going to be extremely competitive and uh, ha have a lot of the right pieces in place. I think we're a better football team this year than we were last year, you know, my, minus, you know, maybe one or two guys. You know, just all sides of the ball, the program, the direction of the program, the coaches, the, the schemes and all that stuff. So thankful to be where we're at and, you know, looking forward to move forward. Okay, thanks, Coach.